Today, we are going to be empowered. And after this webinar, you're going to know exactly who owns every single element on your website. You're going to know how to hire a website freelancer that you can trust and how to um, structure the project so that the work gets done on time and on budget. And you're also going to know how to do basic website tasks yourself, which is really, really important. There are just certain things that you need to be able to do on your own website. All right, so let's talk about the elements of your website and how you can find out who owns them. These are the four different elements of your website. You have a domain name like Amazon.com, socialmedia.com, cabinsofbirchhollow.com, thevalleyhive.com. Your domain name is basically the URL that is your address on the internet. Now that is separate from your website. And most people don't understand that. It's separate. Um, your website hosting is where your website lives. Um, again, that's separate from your domain name. And most people buy their website hosting and domain names through GoDaddy. Um, I have some other recommendations, but GoDaddy is a perfectly fine company. All of my domain names are there, and I have hosting for my minor websites there. I don't have it for my major website, but for most people, it's fine. Um, you also have the content on your website, which could be the design itself. It could be the images, the text, you know, anything that you have on your website, your store catalog, uh, your reservation system, whatever that is, that's the content on your website. Who owns that? Uh, and then you have your website software plugins and tools. Who owns those? You know, if your software developer owns the license, do you own it? You know, it's, it's a fair question. So we're going to look at all these. All right, so first, who owns your website domain and hosting? Well, a lot of times what I have found is that if you hire a website developer, they will often put things in their own name just because it's easier. Um, I don't think that most of them are trying to mislead you. It's just easier to have things in their name and go to their email because they can complete your project faster. However, a lot of times they won't change it over to be in your name. Or sometimes they, they just want to own it. Um, so here's how you can find this out. There's two tools that I'm going to um, give you access to, and they're both free. The first one is um, ICANN.org. Now I'm going to put this in the chat window. Oh, and Marge says, I also have suggestions for website hosting. <laughs> I recently left GoDaddy. He was always trying to sell me something. Yes, they will, Marge. They're big on the upsell. Um, I'm actually a big fan of GoDaddy, though. They have 24-7 telephone support, and that's something that I recommend that everybody has access to. Okay. ICANN is the international organization that regulates domain names. And so you can go here and enter in your domain name, and it will tell you who owns it. So I'm going to put in my domain name and click look up. And then I have to confirm that I'm not a robot. Okay, so it's going to show you a lot of stuff here. Basically, you want to look at all this registration, admin, and tech contact. The registrant is really the most important thing because that is who your website is registered to, that domain name. You see my name and address here. The other thing that you want to look at is registrar. That is where your domain is registered. And here you can see it's registered with GoDaddy. That's important. You want to know who owns it and where is it. Because that way, if you can see somebody else owns it, you know, you, you need to make some changes. You know, um, they either need to put it in your name or you need to change your domain name. 